are the darkest of the yellows. And um, these are uh, just craft brushes, the ones that I use for this kind of painting. Um, they work just fine. And they will dry. The paint is um, 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 good quality, actually watercolor. And as you can see, I'm using it really thick because I'm going to do, instead of um, painting over it again with thick paint, I'm going to use some, some water. And I can keep adding water to it and already get the definition in it because it's uh, lighter on top than it is on top. And as you can see, I'm already uh, turning my paper around. And because it's so thick, I can, I can probably work wet and wet. Which is kind of what I enjoy doing. Get some definition in there. I got it's a little bit too too much. There we go. And just you know, use your fingers to kind of blend it. It seems redundant to start painting it first in one color and then adding the other color over it, but it really isn't. It really, really works the best if you do it this way, wet and wet. It, you know, it makes it makes your blending nice, and uh, it just makes it look better. The bottom part, right here. Over bunches, and actually. If you look at it, it's, I'm not sure if it's stripes or if my printer is just messed up. I think my printer is just kind of destroyed. So I'm not going to give her stripes in her brushes bunches because I'm not sure if it's... Mm. Oops. If it's, um... Her brushes are Okay, I'm going to use the same really bright yellow. And this one is actually really, really thick. Um, I like using it thick to mask out certain areas that you kind of mess up easily. Excuse my significant. the bottom of her belly. So again, I'm just gonna, you know, with watercolors you want to work from light to dark, but because I'm using it kind of thickish anyway, it doesn't particularly matter that much. Um, the thicker the paint, the more control you get over it as well, so you don't want to be too bothered with it. printer is probably out of yellow. I'm amazed that Darcy asked for yellow, for red, because she's all yellow. Yellow she's bad color. But, mm. Darker highlights, uh, shadows, I mean. So I'm gonna hit that tail too. Hit that tail. Tail. Okay, so there we go. And I'm going to use the original darker yellow that I had right here. And I'm mixing it up just a little bit, just on a piece of paper. I'm not even using my palette right here. And I'm going to put in some uh, some darker parts. Just a little bit darker. And the bottoms of these things too. Okay. Well, because it's still wet, I can use my fingers to move the paint around because I'm not using white. Um, they're not in the drawing, but to make sure that she actually kind of pops, I'm going to add some little bit of highlights right there. Nothing too big, nothing too small, kind of on her, on her hand, the high parts of her legs. Um, it may not show up on the video, especially on my crap tested camera. And um, you will notice it when I scan it in. So, there we go. It's a nice dark, deep red. And take your time to go around the, the fingers and stuff like that. Again, if you're not that comfortable with it, then, you know, work 
look more. And you'll get better with it. I'd rather use a frisket. There's several friskets out there you can use. You can use the callable ones or you can use the uh, paint stuff. It's my uh, brushing. I use both. thing is about dust pellets, if you have kids or cats or, you know, any kind of ferment, ferment at home, it comes for unwanted roommates and other despicable human beings. You can just close the, the pellet and your paint legs will stay wet in there, especially if you put a paper towel with it or something, it'll stay wet for, you know, a long time. What you want. You want things to stay wet for a long time. Long time. There we go. And I'm just adding more and more pigments just to put a little bit of water to it. It's a really dark. And you don't have to be really good at it either. Just look at the dark parts, look at the high parts. Okay, the deep parts are darker. Now when it's still wet, I am going to make a, uh, where's that called, what's this, okay, I've got this light color, and again, it's not watercolor either, so I'm not sure how this is going to stand up to it, but I'm going to try using this one as a highlight, put a little bit of white with it, and it actually becomes kind of a pinkish color. I'm going to use it with a lot of water, so you can, you can turn acrylics if you want to into watercolors, okay, no big deal. Just add more water. Okay, you can see that it's by far not light enough, so I'm going to use a bottle of the white. And actually make almost a skin color, if you would add some more uh, extra colors to it. It'll turn into a skin color. But I'm going to use it to highlight things on her sweater. Right there. And then just use your finger to kind of smoosh it out. Especially on parts where you don't want it. There we go. And she's got a right there. Mm, bulge. Goes right there. Okay, so you just kind of highlight it. And I just move the paint around like that. Alright, uh, next thing to do is have a very dark yellow for her mouth. So I'm going to use the original dark dark yellow that I had. And I don't have any black on my palette, I think. No. So I have to use just the Teeny bit of brown. A lot of people are afraid to use black and white because they, you know, you're not supposed to, they say. Well, bull crap. In art, you want contrast. That's what makes a good piece. Contrast. A lot of contrast. So, the more contrast you got, the um, more. Um, your painting will pop more. Your colors will pop if you use contrasting colors. I use pure black and pure white in all my portraits, you know. And then you just use a little bit of a wash over it. Not too much. Just a little bit. Okay. To indicate where you want, you know, the certain part to go or not to go. When you're right-handed, don't have your palette right next to you because on that side because you turn out to be all, you know, no. Alright, I've 
save some of the original brown before I mix it. And I'm going to use that so I got go and then hit it once, hit it again, and lighten up the, um, the bottom part just a little bit. And if it's still too dark, just add a little bit of yellow to it, just a little bit. You want the contrast between those two, and I'm actually going to use a little bit more yellow to make it even lighter, because it will show up even better. There we go. All right, her tongue is kind of white on the bottom and pink on top. So I'm going to use the pink that we already mixed. Excuse me. I'm going to use a bright, bright, bright pink that I have as a starting color right here. Like that. I'm going to use it very wet too. Then I'm going to use a lighter, lighter pink with less paint on it and go underneath and pull that all down like that. Just pull it down. And then I'm going to take nothing, dry brush, pull the paint out as much as you can. Spread it out, and I'm going to use a water a brush with clean water and finish it up like that. Tap it with your hand, with your finger, and that'll do it. All right, now it's mostly dry, so I'm going to use a uh, light brown to put in some extra definition on her features. Okay, you don't have to. It's up to you. And I'm going to use my finger to lighten those up. Use your paper towel if you want to. Doesn't particularly matter much. Okay, because we've lost a lot when it, as I said, you will lose some definition over time when you uh, um, when it dries up. So I'm mixing up a very pale, 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 pale yellow, almost white, to hit highlights again, and then it's done. So here you go. Get up the clumping of your brush. Clean your brush. Get some more paint on there. Right on the bristles and around, so it actually turns into a brush, and a little bit of highlight. There we go. And you can see the contrast coming back in. Okay. Just a little bit of there. So highlights on her hands. And on her feet. Alright. Now it's almost done. I just have to put in some shadows for her um, for her sweater. And I'm gonna use a purple for that. That I'm mixing up right now. There we go. Just a very watery purple. And I'm going to go underneath right there. And everywhere where there's a shadow, hit it. So, and we already know where the light source is coming from because we already put in the highlight. Because of the vermin in your house, kids, roommates, all kinds of things. All right, don't forget to sign your drawings. And again, Darcy Bake, this one's for you, homie. Hope you like it, and I'll see you guys next time. And you know.